Welcome to the Gen Z Childhood Trauma Iceberg Community Edition. I don't have too much to say here. Well, uh, here's part two of the Community Iceberg. Reminder, of course, this is part six of the series, so if you haven't seen any of the other episodes, then I suggest that you check them out before you watch this. This iceberg was made by community suggestions, people put it in the comments, on Discord, etc. And the second half gets pretty disturbing by the end of it, so if you're a younger kid, I would highly suggest clicking off the video now. You've been warned. Alright, let's do this thing. Middle of the ice. Mariana Margard Gleskor. This entry is referring to an old YouTube video, which is kind of an urban legend on the internet. Mariana Mardegard Gleskor is a cursed YouTube video that was deleted by YouTube. If you look it up now, you can find it, but what you find is not the full thing. Allegedly, those who watched the original video pulled their eyes out and mailed them to YouTube headquarters. What? Yeah, the story never really made any sense, especially the eye thing. Like, how the hell can you mail them to YouTube if you don't have eyes? It's... I don't know. It's dumb. But the video itself is nothing special, and the alleged full version is on YouTube for you to watch, and no. The video will not make you mail your eyeballs to YouTube. Fishmen. Alright, I feel like this one is going to bring back memories for tons of people who forgot about this video. Fishmen is a classic video uploaded on the channel Hackor, who also created the iconic Here Comes Pac-Man video. The Fishmen is a parody of the song It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, and displays a future apocalyptic world filled with these humanoid fishmen. The special effects are pretty good, especially considering the fact that this video was released in 2009. The video is undeniably charming and I love it, but it's pretty unnerving. The video is based off of the story Shadow Over Innsmouth by H.P. Lovecraft, which on its own is pretty scary. I watch this video every Christmas season and it always gets me in the holiday spirit. If you haven't seen the video, then I highly suggest that you check it out. Feel Good Ink Music Video So, Gorillaz. It's pretty much the coolest band out there. I'm a huge fan, and lots of you guys are too. If you don't know about Gorillaz, then you'll probably be confused as to why the real band members never show up. Well, that's because the band is just fictional animated characters. In 2005, they released a song by the name of Feel Good Inc., and it's a damn good song. It blew up and had a music video to go along with it, which has some pretty dark themes. When I first listened to Feel Good Inc., I didn't really like the song because the laugh kind of freaked me out, but nowadays, Feel Good Inc. is one of my favorite songs, and I even played it on stage live when I was 13. Gorillaz is awesome, but sometimes it has some dark themes. I also want to give an honorable mention shout out to the music video for the song Rocket. Yeah, I don't think I have to explain this one. Liquid Generation Tube. Liquid Generation Tube was an old website that just stinks of 2000s, and not in a great way. They had a YouTube channel featuring videos from their website, which started off as uh, tabloidy style videos, and then later moved to top 10 videos, and then they started doing these little flash animations, where some were called sabotages. The idea is that you would send a video to a friend that looked innocent at first, but then it became something dirty. Then later, they started a video series by the name of Angry Leprechaun. I'm guessing this entry was submitted because of this series. It features an angry animated leprechaun cursing and threatening the viewer. Does anyone remember this? Treats for Beasts. Treats for Beasts is an iconic YouTube channel that has been in like 50 other iceberg videos. You probably recognize the channel from the video Beasts. The videos on this channel are all social commentary, and they all have a pretty creepy vibe to them. There are a bunch of videos all focusing on different topics, and they really appeal to that guy who loves nihilism and existential stuff. The creator of the channel clearly isn't too big of a fan of religion, and it shows. There's also a video called Who Wants to Gnaw on Human Bones, and... Yeah, I'm not really sure if this one has like a hidden meaning to it or something, but I don't know. Mimi Paper Mario. This entry is referring to the third boss of the game, Super Paper Mario. This game in general has a weird vibe to it, it might be because of the game heavily deviated from the Mario vibe or whatever, but either way, there was some weird stuff. The character Mimi, who had a cute normal appearance, turns into this without warning, and then you have to fight her. It really is a nightmarish fight because it happens out of nowhere. Fun fact, I actually lost my first tooth while playing this game. Teddy has an operation. Teddy has an operation is a classic YouTube video that I'm sure most of you have seen. It features a teddy bear getting surgery. 
Thing is, the bear has some really realistic looking organs, and it's all narrated by a voice that sounds like it's straight out of a storybook. Inside this teddy, there are a bunch of weird things inside of him that get pulled out of his realistic organs. The video was unwatchable me back when I was a little kid, but nowadays it's really not that bad. It's still pretty disgusting at times, but if you overlook that, then the video is actually kind of wholesome. I think it depends on the person, but I suggest that you check it out. 1000 Ways to Die 1000 Ways to Die is one that many, many people commented asking for it to be in this iceberg. 1000 Ways to Die is basically a series that exists just to display people dying in a bunch of different ways. The series was presented in a way that resembled the documentary which made the cheesy videos seem real. Obviously, these videos are really scary and disturbing simply because of all the blood and violence, and I guess it's kind of like Final Destination the show. Raving Rabbids Original Design You're probably familiar with the Rabbids, you know, the minions of gaming. They're pretty cute and friendly looking, but they weren't originally. In the cancelled game Rayman 4, the characters had a way more threatening look and were all antagonists. I could totally see a kid being scared by these characters while watching the original trailer. Dumb Ways to Die Dumb Ways to Die is a classic subway safety PSA that blew up on YouTube. The video features these cute little characters dying in a bunch of dumb ways, some more tame than others. Of course there ended up being a bunch of parodies of this video, some being more graphic than the original. I remember there being a real life version that featured what seemed to be like real life videos of people dying in some cases, alongside stuff from movies and games. Dumb Ways to Die also had two mobile games that were basically little mini-game fests, and they were tons of fun. If you haven't seen Dumb Ways to Die, then I highly suggest that you check it out. It really is an iconic part of internet history. If anyone else remembers the real-life Dumb Ways to Die video, please let me know, because I really I can't find it anywhere on YouTube, and, I, and I'm sure it was on YouTube. But I guess it just might end up being some sort of lost media at this point. Mad Zombie This entry is referring to a parody of the movie Bambi from the old Cartoon Network show Mad which has another segment from it later on in this list. Zombie depicts Bambi's mom, who was killed in the movie, back from the grave. Eventually, the hunter who shot her appears and they get locked into the same room and the zombie deer presumably kills the man. Need I say more? This mad show was basically a robot chicken for kids. And I say that with quotation marks because this definitely had a lot of scary and disturbing moments that actually seemed like things that you'd find on Robot Chicken. Little Shop of Horrors Little Shop of Horrors is a musical about a giant killer alien plant that comes to Earth and suckers a guy into feeding it blood. Little Shop of Horrors is a parody of your average B-movie because it originally was exactly that with a super cheesy plot and special effects. Later, in 1986, a movie featuring Rick Moranis was released and it's amazing. This is the version of Little Shop of Horrors that most people know and it's by far the best. It's an adaptation of the Broadway musical and the special effects are out of this world, which actually scared a lot of younger kids who saw it. In the movie, people get eaten alive, die from too much laughing gas, get chopped up, and at the end of it all, in the director's cut, the plants take over the world and the main characters get killed. If you haven't seen it, then I highly suggest you do. I'm not too big of a musical fan, but I love Little Shop of Horrors. Mullet Mike This entry is referring to an old YouTube channel run by a guy named Mike who, who covered creepypasta content related to video games. He had a series by the name of Creepy Gaming, which focused on, well, Creepy Gaming. The series covered a lot of things that were already in this iceberg, and I personally loved them as a kid. They freaked me out, but Mike was always a great host and made things easier to watch. I'm not exactly sure why, but Mike recently re-uploaded all his classic videos, so if you want to go revisit your childhood, I recommend checking them out. Theme Park Gone Wrong Videos this entry is referring to a bunch of old YouTube videos displaying roller coasters and other theme park rides malfunctioning, showing people actually falling out of the rides. When I was a kid, I had a bit of a morbid fascination with these videos, since I was a big fan of theme parks, and they were scary in a way that not many other things were. I'm wondering how many other people experienced this, since the only other time I've heard anyone talking about this was in the comment recommending this. So. If you guys were scared by these back in the day, let me know. These clickbait videos are still being made to this day, so it could be in a Gen Alpha iceberg in the future. Revenge of the Mushroom Kingdom Back in the day, Mario's sprite animations were all the rage, and people loved them. Often being made by teens and young adults, these videos sometimes had a dark twist, and this was one of them. In this video series, Mario dies, and the Mushroom Kingdom basically falls apart. A bunch of violent stuff happens, there's blood... Yeah. Bowling Alley Animations Alright, so this is one that's super nostalgic to me and probably lots of you guys. 
Around the 90s and early 2000s, many bowling alleys implemented these cute little animations corresponding to things that would happen in your bowling match. For example, if you were to get a strike, it would show that on an animation on screen. Same thing with a spare, gutter ball, whatever. Sometimes these animations were kind of violent, showing living pins get killed, essentially. Sometimes the humans were... Yeah. They, they, uh, they haven't really aged too well. Honestly, I've really loved these animations, but I do see how some younger kids could be freaked out by them. Liquid Slam. Alright, so Liquid Slam is a fictional pouch drink from the video Every 90s Commercial Ever from the channel Rocket Jump. The video parodies cheesy 90s commercials for Capri Sun drinks, but it takes a really dark turn when the kids turn into this terrifying creature and start killing people. The video is awesome and totally captures the feel of a 90s commercial, you know, minus the killer mutant kids, but the video is genuinely pretty scary. I, and I remember it terrifying me when I was younger. I was fascinated with classic commercials from the 80s and 90s, and so I thought this video would be a compilation of a bunch of 90s commercials. But then I saw this scary video and I didn't like it. Later on I rewatched it and loved it, and it's a really good video, but it's scary. Garfield's Nightmare Ride. So, this one's referring to a dark ride at the Kennywood theme park. The ride was formerly an old mill ride that was built in 1901 that was then replaced by this Garfield ride. The ride was incredibly weird and hated by most people. The ride featured creepy music and eerie effects, and it really looks like a fever dream. The water was murky, the effects didn't work well, and overall it was just a bizarre thing. In 2020, the park got new ownership, and the ride was removed and returned to the original old mill, and everything relating to Garfield in the park was also removed. Katie Putty. This is another one from Mad. Remember that kid's robot chicken thing? This one is a parody of the song Firework and features the titular character Katie Putty singing the song to some other puppets. It takes a very literal turn when the puppets start catching fire and burning from the flames. There are some pretty disturbing shots of the characters who've been burned alive, and I know that if I saw this shit as a kid, I would, it would have made me cry. This show really was not for kids. Abandoned by Disney. Abandoned by Disney is probably one of the most famous creepypastas ever. The story is about a man who travels to a Disney resort which has been abandoned for years. He explores the place and finds a bunch of creepy things, and the story has a really great way of explaining the things and making them really unnerving. Eventually, and most infamously, he stumbles across a room labeled Mascots. He opens it and finds a photo-negative Mickey Mouse costume that stands up and asks him if he'd like to see his head come off. This Mickey costume then rips his head off and it bleeds yellow blood and the explorer flees. He, he rips his own head off, not the... Not the uh, explorer's head. The story had some dark and creepy sequels too, but the original was the one known by most. What was most terrifying for me was the name. Yeah, just the name. When I was like eight, I saw the thumbnail for the video alongside the name and in my imagination ran wild. I basically created a story in my mind that was scarier than the actual story. Overall, I'm glad that people recommended this. It sure was scary. There was also a popular Five Nights at Freddy's fan game based on this uh, I never played it, but it was pretty popular. Polybius. Alright, this one is pretty personal to me. Polybius is an urban legend about a mysterious arcade game that popped up in Portland, Oregon in the early 1980s. The game was incredibly addictive to those who played it, and it would often have people forming lines just to play the game. Allegedly, some people who played it that would hear noises and see faces in their peripheral vision. Arcade owners who hosted the game claimed to have seen men in black suits coming into the arcade after hours and taking some sort of data from the machines. Eventually, a boy got a seizure from the game and it disappeared from arcades. The game is theorized to have been a government test, like MKUltra, to see the effect of video games on the brain. You're probably wondering, is any of this real? Well, unfortunately, I can't really give you a definitive answer to that. But back in the day when I was a kid, I really, really wanted this to be real, and there were some bits of evidence that were actually pretty convincing. There are a bunch of pictures online showing allegedly real arcade cabinets, which are all most likely fan-made, since the designs aren't consistent with each other. But what really gave me hope was a local arcade that claimed to have a Polybius cabinet. Here in New York, we've got a place called Barcade, which is a bar with a bunch of classic 80s and 90s games. On their Instagram, they claim to have found a Polybius cabinet in an old Oregon storage room. This same Polybius cabinet showed up in their arcade. Being only like 9 at the time, I obviously would not be let inside the place since, well, it's a bar. But luckily, someone actually did a walkthrough of the bar and showed the cabinet for a second. 
a game down there called Polybus. I have no idea what the hell that is. In this video, a high scoreboard is shown. And for Polybius, the high score is just a bunch of sixes. The person who got it is also unknown. This genuinely made me think the game was real, so I actually called the bar and had a conversation with the guy on the phone. He claimed that they never had it and that the game was an urban legend, so I explained to him that they used to have a cabinet, etc. He told me that the game was probably just the fan-made ROM put into an arcade cabinet and then displayed for Halloween. Later, I found this post that they made claiming that they had to get rid of the Polybius game because it was too dangerous. Overall, this is one of the greatest urban legends out there. I love it. If you've got any information that isn't generally well known about Polybius, then please let me know in the comments. Little Miss Rarity This entry is referring to an old My Little Pony fan animation showing the pony Rarity's horn being removed. In this, the horn contains her memories, and they are seen by the pony who dissected it. She finds out that Rarity once got scratched by her cat, and realizes that she enjoyed it. So she starts to inflict pain on herself and others, all just for fun. Eventually, she accidentally kills the cat and tries to bring it back in the form of a creepy-ass doll. More messed up stuff happens, and then eventually Rarity brands herself, and then turns into a Resident Evil boss. Yeah. This video was watched by way too many kids, which is apparent through the comments of the video. And it totally makes sense that people were recommending it for this video. There are some sequels to it, there's probably some message that I'm missing, but honestly, I don't want to watch any more of these. Nine Movie. This entry is referring to a movie released in September 2009 by the name of Nine. You see what, uh, what they were doing there? The film takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, completely desolate of humans, which on its own is is pretty creepy, especially considering the fact that the main character finds the corpses of humans. The film may look like your average kid's adventure movie, but no, not at all. This movie is really violent and really dark, and actually really mature in its themes. If you haven't seen the film, then I would highly suggest you do, since it's pretty good. I remember seeing the trailers of this movie back in 2009, and it intrigued me, but I knew it definitely wasn't appropriate for me. I had a feeling that lots of kids watched this movie, thinking that it would be your average PG movie, only to get a really dark post-apocalyptic movie. Coraline. This entry is referring to a stop-motion animated movie released in 2009 that was based off of the book Coraline. The movie's animation alone is a bit unnerving since it had a really gloomy art style, but what really gets disturbing is the creatures that the main character encounters. There are these alternate reality versions of her parents with button eyes that try to get her to remove her eyes and replace them with buttons. Obviously they are evil and later turn into Resident Evil 5 style bosses. There are many more creepy things in this movie, which I won't spoil, since I think a lot of the people watching this video would probably like the movie, and if they haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it for them. But this is a kind of similar thing to Nine. Lots of kids watched it expecting it not to be Nightmare Fuel, and then got this movie. I remember being pretty freaked out by it when I first saw it, and I can totally relate to this one. River Twig's Bed. This entry is referring to an area of the game Super Paper Mario. You're swimming through a river, and once you get to the bottom, these hands start to attack you, and this song starts playing. Yeah, that's a song from every single Iceberg YouTube video ever made. These hand things are obviously really unnerving, but then again, the whole game was, as I said earlier. What makes it even creepier is that you can hear a distorted, low-pitched voice saying, Save us. I'm just gonna leave you with that one. The Max Hedrum Incident. On November 22nd, 1987, Chicago television station got hijacked by a man in a Max Hedrum costume. Max Hedrum being an old TV character who was essentially the first computer-generated TV host. This is the 80s, so of course it was just a guy in makeup, but still, it was, it was pretty cool. In the hijack, the background actually moves like it would in the actual Max Hedrum show. The person dressed up as Max talks to the camera and makes some pop culture references, and it cuts to him being spanked. With a, with a fly swatter. The culprits were never caught, but there are some suspicions that the person who played Max was the creator of Say Shane John, which was in the original Iceberg series. A YouTuber by the name of Wang has a great video on the subject. You might be wondering, how is this Gen Z? This is from the 80s. Well, back in the day, this broadcast was spread all over the creepypasta fandom, so it reached a lot of kids and scared them. I remember being pretty freaked out by this, and I'm sure many of you guys can relate. Indie melting scene. This entry is referring to the iconic scene in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the Nazi guy opens the Ark of the Covenant and him and all the troops around him are killed by the spirits inside. The main soldiers get a hole blown through them, but what is most disturbing is when these guys' faces melt off. Need I say more? SpongeBob Saw. This entry is referring to an old video series on YouTube parodying the Saw movie franchise, but with SpongeBob and Patrick. 
The videos were super low quality and done in Microsoft Paint, and the videos are just so old YouTube, it's great. But obviously this series is really disturbing to a lot of kids since it featured Spongebob and Patrick and Saw. What's awesome is that the creator of these videos is actually still making these videos to this day. He's got a remake of the original Saw series, but with far better illustrations, but still in Microsoft Paint. He's also got a Resident Evil Spongebob parody, and even Spongebob in Among Us. The channel is called Panchito Matrix, so if you want to relive some scary old memories, go check it out. Can Your Pet Can Your Pet was an old Flash game where you would name a cute little chick and play with it. You get to dress it, wash it, feed it, play with it. You unlock all these things as you go. Eventually, you unlock what looks like a bicycle. Once you select it, the floor caves in and the bicycle turns upside down and shreds the little chick into meat. The meat falls as the credits play. Eventually it all ends up in a can with the name of your pet on it. And then the title screen shows, Can Your Pet. Yeah, it's uh, it's soul crushing, I know. I first learned about this from the Kids React video on it and I had no idea what I was getting into. This was really disturbing, especially being a meat eater at the time. The game heavily resembles those old PETA Flash games which actually make an appearance on here later. Hell Valley Sky Trees. In the Wii game, Super Mario Galaxy 2, there was a level called Shiverburn Galaxy. This level was a mix of lava and ice, and seemingly took place in a giant crater or a volcano of sorts. Nothing inherently spooky, but if you look up using the first person mode, you will see these figures. They follow you through the entire level and are always just watching. People dug through the files and found that these characters were named the Hell Valley Sky Tree. If you think about it, these characters were massive. If they are this big from that far away, then these creatures are huge. Oddly enough, these aren't the only creepy creatures in Super Mario. In Super Mario 3D Land, at the end of one of the ghost house levels, this creepy figure shows up if you wait long enough. In Super Paper Mario, River Twig's bed, and in Mimi, alongside this creepy lighting glitch in Luigi's mansion. When I was a kid, I was kind of fascinated with the Hell Valley Sky Tree, and I really wanted to know more about them. Mullet Mike, who was mentioned earlier, had a great video series talking about them, which further fueled my interest in them. I'm gonna look for an old drawing that I made when I was like 8 or 9 with the Hell Valley Sky Tree in them. It's pretty cool, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it. Update! Here it is! Uh, no, I couldn't find it. Hypno's Lullaby Hypno was a Pokemon who had a really strange aura to him. It could hypnotize people, and its Pokedex entry reads, It carries a pendulum-like device. There was once an incident where it took a child away that it hypnotized. This Pokedex entry inspired a creepypasta and this song. Come, little children, come with me. Safe and happy you will be. Away from home, now let us run. With Hypno you'll have so much fun. Oh. The song was so incredibly disturbing to me and tons of other kids. And I remember not being able to finish listening to the song because of how much it freaked me out. And I really never want to encounter the Pokemon in game. Deep Water. Set yourself free, PSA. This entry is referring to a bizarre PSA about skipping school. The PSA presents itself as your average poppy teen soda commercial featuring a bunch of Disney Channel teenagers skipping school and sneaking into a closed beach. They are living the teenage dream until this girl runs off and... Yeah. The other teens start running away and also get blown up. We then see what exactly it was that they snuck into. A bomb testing site. A sign is shown displaying that. I'm not exactly sure where this aired, but regardless, this is a really disturbing PSA, especially considering how long it sets you up for it to be normal. Uh, so I guess don't skip school if you don't want to get blown up. Don't feed the zombies, Newgrounds. This was an old video on Newgrounds showing zombies violently tearing apart a bunch of people, while that old Num 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 song that would play all over Roblox in like 2014 plays. Only, the song is distorted. The video is really violent and the gore is really well done. I personally love the video because I love all things zombies. You know, Resident Evil, Shaun of the Dead, Walking Dead, House of the Dead, Zombieland, all that stuff. It's great. But obviously, this would be really terrifying if it was watched by a kid, for extremely obvious reasons. Boogie Maths. This entry is referring to an old YouTube video where these cute little characters are doing math problems. The teacher writes one down and the kid dances to it. 
Eventually, the problem gets really, really advanced, and then this happens. Republic Commando Ship. So, the game Star Wars Republic Commando is definitely a dark one. The game is violent, mature, and generally pretty different tonally from most Star Wars games. There's this one part of the game where you and your squad all individually explore a Republic gunship. You find some clone troopers who are unfortunately all killed in front of you as all you can do is watch helplessly. Eventually, you find the space parts that took over the ship and they are extremely aggressive and rush you with daggers and shotguns. Later, you'll find your squad mate Sev being tortured by these pirates. You find bodies of clones all over the place and honestly, it's more sad than anything. Eventually, you end up in a dark room where you get a distress signal from a squad of surviving clones. Once you turn on your night vision, you'll see that all these clones are dead. The game was really something special and I encourage you guys all to play it. It recently released on the Switch and PlayStation 4, and it's pretty cheap, so if you like Star Wars or just great games in general, that you should absolutely play this. Jekyll and Hyde Club The Jekyll and Hyde Club is a franchise of spooky-themed restaurants filled with animatronics and actors. Some of the animatronics are pretty damn scary, and they often were controlled and voiced by people in another room, so they could address you directly, basically. Think Leonard Beerstein from Chris Chandler. The restaurant- <laughs> That's funny, I forgot I put that in. The restaurant first opened in 1987 in the West Village in New York, and it was great. Actors would roam the restaurant and interact with patrons. At some point in the 90s, another way bigger location opened near Central Park, and this one was intense. It had this clown guy, a skeleton band, and a live animatronic show, and it was really cool. In 2012, this place closed down, and later in the year they opened a location in Times Square, which was really extravagant. I personally went there when I was 9, and I got so freaked out because of all the animatronics, and the overall atmosphere, though, when this little old lady, who, keep in mind, was just a normal, real old lady, approached me, explaining that she didn't understand modern technology, I was playing on my 3DS, she freaked me out so bad that I jumped and recoiled backwards. It was hilarious. Unfortunately, in 2015, this restaurant closed down permanently, and now the only surviving location is the original West Village location. Unfortunately, the place is kind of falling apart, but it's still a ton of fun, and it's still freaking out kids to this day. I have a feeling it's not going to last too much longer, so if you're in New York, I'd highly recommend that you go check the place out. PETA Flash Games The People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals is an incredibly controversial organization. Alone, the idea is a good one, but they kind of suck. Like, real bad. In the 2000s and 2010s, they created a bunch of Flash games parodying a bunch of popular video games that were for children, like Mario, Pokemon, Cooking Mama, etc. These games were really bloody and disturbing, especially in the case of the Cooking Mama one. And since these games were of kid-friendly IPs, lots of kids either played the games or at least watched videos of them being played on YouTube. And they were promptly disturbed. I was one of those kids, and I personally actually played the Super Chick Sisters game a few times, and I liked it. But I was also disturbed by the portrayal of KFC and Ronald McDonald. At the end of one of the Chick Sisters games, you'd be presented with a bonus video taken secretly, showing the awful cruelty of the chicken coops and all of the torture that the chickens go through before they are killed. It's some really, really, really disturbing stuff on its own right. One of PETA's stupider games was Mario Kills Tanuki, which was a uh, protest uh, to the return of the Tanuki suit in the game Super Mario 3D Land. They were basically saying that Mario skins Tanookis and wears their suit, which is fucking stupid. They also made a parody by the name of Pokemon Black and Blue, which compared Pokemon to circus animals in the way that they are poorly treated. Kind of a stretch. Overall, I'm glad that they stopped doing these since they are really unnecessary in my opinion. And uh, PETA sucks. A Hennabarbus Hennacide. This entry is referring to an iconic creepy face and the Facebook page around it. Allegedly, this account would send disturbing pictures alongside coordinates to random children. Some people claim to have visited the Facebook page seeing extremely graphic and illegal content on it, which was deleted slightly after they visited. Eventually, some more disturbing things appeared on the page and it was deleted. Apparently, the face itself is from a Japanese website by the name of 2chan. People on the website have an inside joke where they try to make the character less scary, which... Uh, good luck with that. Me, me, me. 
Me 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 is a really well done, crazy YouTube video about porn addiction. The video is animated in the Japanese anime art style, and I'm only going to show you parts of it. Um, if you've seen the video, you know exactly why. There's a pretty tragic story to the whole thing, which if it's your first time watching, you won't get because the boobies are all over the place, and uh, that's very distracting. But basically, throughout the whole video, this guy, the protagonist, is basically being hypnotized by the big booby anime girls. However, those big booby anime girls are representative of his addiction. So, they are evil monster-like creatures. Eventually, the guy's girlfriend is found, crying, and the guy tries to help her but can't, and is seen being eaten by a naked anime girl. Eventually, the guy goes through a Sailor Moon transformation into this badass super soldier, and the video turns into a first-person perspective as he blasts apart the anime girls like they're zombies and he's Leon Kennedy. Unfortunately, he gets ambushed by an army of anime girls with the same type of weaponry as the fembots in Austin Powers, if you know what I'm talking about. He is then torn apart and eaten by these characters, and it ends with him dead. And that's where the video starts. Yeah, the thing goes forever. It loops. The guy never overcomes his addiction, and his girlfriend just has to go through the same pain over and over and over again. This is one of those videos that was recommended to many, many kids and freaked them out. The video has a pretty deep message to it, and uh... Well, that's lost on uh, most people who watch it, at least for the first time. Evil Chipmunks. This entry is referring to a scene in the movie, Disaster Movie, where the main characters find these really realistic looking portrayals of the CGI Alvin and the Chipmunk characters. The Chipmunks are friendly and just singing Christmas songs at first, and the characters enjoy it. However, the Chipmunks start singing death metal and eventually they are revealed to have rabies. They attack all the people. Eventually, the pregnant woman gets eaten alive by the Chipmunks and it's pretty disturbing. I remember seeing the clip back in 2015 and at the time, me and my friends loved watching the original Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. And I had personally watched that movie since I was like four, so I was very fond of it. Seeing this definitely disturbed me and lots of other kids for obvious reasons. Watching it now, it's kind of hilarious in a way, and it's very unexpected, especially without context of the rest of the movie, so I totally understand why you guys recommended it. Body falling from the ceiling picture. Alright, so I have a feeling that most of you guys will recognize this picture. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty terrifying. Turns out the picture is fake, but uh, still, it's, it's scary. The Squawking Dead. The Squawking Dead is an old Angry Birds parody animation of The Walking Dead, where there's a group of birds defending themselves against a horde of zombie pigs. Unfortunately, most of the birds get brutally killed off by these zombie pigs, and I mean brutally killed. Like, this is some violent shit. Eventually, the King Pig breaks in and starts eating the Bomb Bird. Being the Bomb Bird, he blows up, saving the last remaining birds. The Red Bird then starts to lose feathers and he turns into a zombie. The video is probably watched by kids thinking it was just another one of many other kid-friendly uh, Angry Birds animations, and were probably scared out of their minds by this violent wrong. I feel bad for any kids who watched this, since I was one of those kids who just watched a ton of Angry Birds videos. Beeble Fox. Uh, this is a weird one. Beeble Fox was a weird YouTube channel about a weird man. The first video on his channel is a review of Grand Theft Auto. You can see a part of his room is filled up with pictures of this young looking girl. This guy has the creepiest voice. Like, the creepiest voice, and it fits perfectly with the videos. Why, why, why are you hurting me? No, no, I'm doing society a favor. No, this is the right thing to do. He's got another video called Unboxing My New Daughter, and in it, he, well, unboxes this weird mannequin, and I hate this, and I don't want to keep doing this entry, but I, I gotta continue. This is the fully explained series after all, so I gotta carry on. His most popular video is one of him creepily taking apart another mannequin doll and wearing its limbs, and he's a furry, and yeah, no, no, f*** this. I, I, I remember seeing the Scare Theater video on this, and uh, it was kind of creepy to me at the time, but now I, I really can't stand it. I feel like this guy is your average Discord mod, creeping on kids, and it's just, it's just not good. Luckily, turns out this is just a character. It's still f***ing weird, but still, at least it's all fictional. Syriac Meow. This entry is referring to a video by the YouTuber Syriac, who was a part of the original childhood trauma, Iceberg. This animation has a really cute and friendly art style, but the contents of it are the exact opposite. The video starts with zombie cats rising from their graves, marching over to a city to the beat of music. The zombies attack the living and it's very gory and brutal, in a very stark contrast to the cute visuals. Eventually, the military arrives and starts to take down some zombies. 
But unfortunately, these seem to be Resident Evil 2 zombies, so they don't go down too easily. The poor soldiers are also killed, and every dead cat comes back as a zombie. Every time one dies, their souls release up into the sky, and eventually, the remaining survivors see that the zombies are too powerful, so they decide to just quickly end it themselves, instead of going through the pain of being ripped apart by a zombie. This animation is really morbid and dark, so obviously, this was genuinely terrifying to a lot of kids. They probably just saw the cute zombie cats on the thumbnail and clicked it for that. I guess the moral of the story is to keep kids away from Syriac. Creepy Vocaloid Songs Alright, so Vocaloid is a Japanese software that you can use to essentially make virtual singers sing whatever you want them to sing. It's a pretty cool thing, and there are a whole bunch of characters, most famously Hatsune Miku, who you probably recognize if you've ever been on the internet. Since anyone can make a Vocaloid song, there are a lot of creepy and disturbing ones that kids found. Songs like Fear Garden, about murder. Dark Woods, about a creepy haunted circus in the middle of the woods. In Rainy Town, Balloons Dance with Demons, about sexual assault, and... Many, many other Vocaloid songs dabble in very dark subject matter. Vocaloid is generally somewhat kid-friendly, so I imagine lots of young Vocaloid fans went down a creepy Vocaloid rabbit hole. I personally was kinda into Vocaloid back in the day, playing the old 3DS game, but not much more than that, so I luckily didn't run into any of these songs. Wiggles Puppets The Wiggles is a classic kids TV show group of a bunch of guys singing kid-friendly songs with some puppets and stuff. In the show, there was this segment featuring puppet versions of the band members singing behind a psychedelic background. Alone, this segment is pretty weird and unnerving, but what was more scary is the edits that people made online, which is what's being shown on screen now. I remember seeing the YouTube poops of these, and they were pretty disturbing. Mars 2112 Mars 2112 was a themed restaurant in Times Square. The idea was that you were in a Martian cave, so it all took place underground. To get into this restaurant, you took a spaceship ride down to the restaurant, which was a repurposed military flight simulator. This ride might have been kind of scary to some kids, since the audio was loud and the visuals were very psychedelic, and you were being shaken around the whole time. Once this ride finished, you would walk through a cave where you would walk by a bar and an arcade, where you would eventually find the dining area known as the Crystal Crater. Here you would find a bunch of aliens, which... yeah. While not intentionally creepy, a lot of these characters, especially in the restaurant's later years, became dirty and started to fall apart. There's also this thing. I have no idea what it's supposed to be. And this is the only photo of it that exists. Unfortunately, in 2012, the restaurant closed down for good and there have been no trace of these characters and set pieces since. I personally love the restaurant, but it was terrifying to some, so that's why I put it here. Talking Angela spying on you. Alright, so back in the day, there was this mobile game, I guess, by the name of Talking Tom. In this app, you would talk to your phone, and this little cat character would repeat whatever you said back to you in a high-pitched voice. The game was a hit, with multiple spin-offs and sequels. One of these was Talking Angela, which was a different version of the formula. In Talking Angela, you could actually talk to the cat through text, and it would respond with, like, a Cleverbot-style AI. You could say basically anything to it, which led to sometimes inappropriate situations, but what really started the controversy was the character's eyes. Yeah, turns out if you zoomed into the character's eyes, you could allegedly see a creepy old man who ran the app. And, uh, this creepy old man interacted with all the kids using it. There were a bunch of pictures of these supposed creeps looking through the eyes of these kid-friendly characters. Um, which, this sent parents and news media through a loop, and there was a bunch of stuff warning people not to use the app, and it was honestly pretty frightening. The idea that an innocent kids game could have such a sinister person behind it was really disturbing and frightening for most. Obviously it wasn't true, but it just doesn't really make sense if you think about it. But nowadays, that really is how companies use your data, and most people don't even know it. The age of privacy is over, and it's really scary. Hell on Kitty. Hell on Kitty is an animated parody of Hello Kitty by Twisted Grimm. He uh, also made the Popsicle video from the original Iceberg series. Hell on Kitty is a very cute looking video that could be mistaken for official Hello Kitty material. The video features Hello Kitty going through her day, realizing that she does not have a mouth. Eventually, she tries to eat food and drink water but can't and starts to freak out. She sees a kitchen knife on the floor and reaches for it. The video then cuts to credits showing a bloody sandwich with a bite in it. At the end, we get a jump scare of this creepypasta looking Hello Kitty, and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty disturbing. I feel bad for any innocent kids who clicked on this video expecting to see their favorite cartoon character only to get this. Hamster Hell. 
Hamster Hell is an old stop-motion animation video by Lee Hardcastle, who was the creator of that super disturbing Simpsons video, and many, many, many other more disturbing uh, animations. Hamster Hell is one of his most popular videos. It was all over YouTube recommendations back in the day. The animation is about a boy who gets a hamster and is extremely neglectful and abusive to it, to say the least. Something that makes it disturbing is that the kid seemingly isn't intentionally being terrible and is really more of just him being a stupid idiot. Eventually one of the hamsters has babies and the boy grabs them, making the mother eat the babies. The kid then angrily hits the hamster with a hammer and kills it. The hamster then eats the body, which is just as bloody and disturbing as you'd imagine it to be. And the boy then angrily takes the hamster and throws it out the window. This video was recommended to way, way, way too many kids who were totally disturbed, and especially since this video doesn't start off terrifying, it really is more like a slow burning thing. 25 Ways to Kill Yoshi This video was a classic one. Seen by many kids back in the day, this video showed Yoshi being killed in 25 different ways. The video itself wasn't the worst thing in the world, but there were some pretty violent things, and I personally totally relate to this one since I was a huge fan of Yoshi back in the day, and this video was not fun to watch back then. The video is super nostalgic nowadays, which is why I'm guessing you guys suggested it, but uh, it scared a lot of kids back in the day, and there are multiple sequels, but the original is really the most iconic one. Pony.mov Pony.mov was an animated parody of My Little Pony created by Hot Diggity Demon, who you might know from his current show, Brain Dump. To put it simply, Pony.mov is a dark and adult parody of My Little Pony. The videos had some pretty dark and disturbing imagery in them, which was obviously very unexpected to the kids who watched them. There was one video in particular that was more disturbing from the rest. This video featured the main characters going into one of the ponies hidden rooms in their house. In this room, they find a bunch of skinned animals and gore and all that stuff. The owner of this room then proceeds to chop one of the ponies in half with the chainsaw. I also gotta mention that she sounds like Fat Albert the whole time, which I don't know if that makes it more or less disturbing, but regardless, this series scared a lot of kids and of course became a meme in the brony community, because of course it did. Hal Dead Body and Angry Birds Intro this entry is referring to an Arabic Angry Birds parody that shows the original Angry Birds opening cutscene only with the boomerang bird Hal dead with a trail of blood leading to the pigs who look really weird. I'm pretty sure this is a political cartoon and the rest of the video isn't really disturbing. The animation is actually really good for what it is, but the whole video is in a whole different language. But it really is just the intro alone that's stuck with tons of kids including me. Swearing Baby Swearing Baby is a classic screamer jump scare video that features a cute baby just sitting there until this happens. The description of the video tells you to turn the volume up so you can hear the baby swearing, and I totally see why you guys recommended it. Poochie and Pansy This entry is referring to an ARG web series which portrayed itself as a kid-friendly little kid show, but it ended up being a really disturbing and scary ARG. There's a ton of creepy imagery and jump scares, and of course there's a creepy story hidden within it all. Scare Theater made a great video on it, and I suggest that you check out that video if you want to learn more. Wonder Shosen Wonder Shosen was a TV show that was mimicking a kid's show, but was the exact opposite. The show had a lot of disturbing and violent moments, and tackled really complicated topics. The show was crude, offensive, and disturbing, which was the whole point. I imagine lots of kids might have turned on to this show thinking it was something along the lines of Sesame Street, only to see this disturbing show. Body of a Pig Body of a Pig is a video allegedly showing EVP footage of a ghost saying that it has the body of a pig. It later shows footage of this supposed ghost. Uh, the video is pretty disturbing if you don't think about it for longer than a second. But the idea of this creature being insecure about his body is really just an unfortunate one. Poor guy. Needs some self-confidence. Clone Wars Brain Invaders In the show Star Wars The Clone Wars, there is an episode where some clone troopers pick up a parasite that goes up their nose. This takes over their minds and then basically makes them act like intelligent zombies. Think Resident Evil 4 with the Ganados. The parasite comes out of the clone's mouth and it's pretty intense. Ahsoka Tano, a 14 year old Padawan, has to kill some of her clone friends, which is really unfortunate. Luckily, eventually Ahsoka finds out that the parasites die when they are frozen, which saves her and her friends' asses. The Clone Wars has a ton of really mature and disturbing content in it, which obviously lots and lots of kids watch, since on the surface it is technically a kids show. Which, uh, it isn't, by the way. The Brain Invaders are just one of many, many disturbing things in this show, but this one specifically is just straight up frightening to lots of kids. Coney Island Spookorama 
The Spookorama is a horror dark ride in Coney Island, New York. The ride is really old and pretty cheesy if you look at it nowadays, but as a little kid, this thing was scary. Even the outside of the ride was frightening, with loud sounds and flashing lights and jump scares galore at the Spookorama. The ride is actually still open to this day, frightening children for generations to come. Bottom of the Ice Mnyeh Munchkin This entry is referring to an old urban legend claiming that in the original version of The Wizard of Oz, you can see a munchkin Mnyeh in the background of a scene. The alleged corpse creepily just swings back and forth as the characters happily skip and sing. This scene allegedly is just showing a bird, but does that look like a bird to you? In the remastered cut, the scene is completely different. Uh, very clearly showing a bird. So what gives? Is this real or is it not? Well, turns out it's actually a fake. The footage of the supposed original VHS all comes from one individual YouTube channel which claims to show footage of an old VHS tape. Uh, but wait a minute. It turns out that people have bought VHS tapes older than the one in this YouTube channel and the bird was always there. So despite being convincing, the original Munchkin footage has a slight editing error where the bird's wing clips in for just a second. So, it's fake. But honestly, it's pretty believable. The production of Wizard of Oz is one of the most awful and abusive and painful productions of all time. It was really a living hell to everyone who worked on it. If you want to learn more on the production of this film, you should watch Emperor Lemon's video on the subject. I think the reason that this legend was so scary is because it's one of those urban legends that just kind of spread everywhere. Whether it be on the playground, during recess, or maybe even around a campfire on a cold night. The story has been around since before the internet, making it very well known between generations. SpongeBob Sick Pants SpongeBob Sick Pants is an animated parody of SpongeBob created by Chris O'Neill. Okay, cool. Chris O'Neill, aka Oni AG, aka Oni Plays, is a very funny man who used to make a lot of cartoons on Newgrounds and YouTube. Now he runs a YouTube channel with him and his friends. Psychic Pebbles, a Green Goblin Man, Joshua Tomar, a known psychopath, and others. Anyway, Chris made a Spongebob cartoon that's really bizarre, crude, and violent. There are gratuitous scenes of characters vomiting on each other, and characters getting killed for like, no reason. Spongebob and Patrick end up bringing a boy's corpse to Sandy, and she doesn't answer because of drugs, and then they throw a rock through the window, and then the dome breaks, and then Patrick and Spongebob get eaten by a shark, and Gary gets run over. Yeah, what the hell is Chris O'Neill smoking? Monster Party Beta Alright, so this is a really obscure one. Monster Party is an old game on the NES, which is a monster-themed platformer game. It's a great game and it's super cheesy, but the thing is, this was one of those games that had a very mysterious beta version, like Luigi's Mansion. There were only a few screenshots of this original beta version of the game, and they seemed a lot darker and more disturbing than the original game. People actually tried to rebuild the beta version of this game, which is really cool. Eventually, the allegedly terrifying beta version of the game was released, and it was not actually that bad. The changes made to the official release were mostly just changes to characters who in the original were parodies of copyrighted horror characters. For example, the first boss was a parody of Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors, but in the final version was changed to a pitcher plant that shoots bubbles. The cat boss was originally a gremlin, the Grim Reaper was originally a xenomorph from Alien, and many many more. The official release itself has some pretty messed up moments in it, like the first level where the cute friendly map turns into this bloody disturbing mess while creepy music plays. The end of the game is especially disturbing. It seems like a happy ending until this happens. Three Men and a Baby Ghost this entry is referring to an urban legend about a supposed ghost in the movie Three Men and a Baby. The story goes that a boy was killed in the house that the movie was filmed in, and his ghost appears in the background of the scene. Apparently, the mother of the boy watched the movie and went crazy after seeing her son, and had to be put in a mental institution. But guess what? None of this is true. The supposed ghost is just a cardboard cutout of the actor Ted Danson who was in the movie. The cutout was to be used in a deleted scene which would explain why it was there, but obviously, this was unknown to the audience. The story about the mother and the boy is obviously not true in any way. In fact, they didn't even film it in a house. This was all filmed on a soundstage, and there's no possible way it could be true. The story itself is still pretty disturbing, if you, you know, don't think about it. And I remember hearing about it as a kid, and it freaking me out. So I totally understand why you guys suggested it. Hambuster. Hambuster is a short animated film by Sup and Focom Team. The video starts with a fat guy sitting down in the park to eat a burger. The burger comes to life and then consumes a baby. 
We then see the fat guy getting chased by the burger through the streets and it tries to eat him and eats other people in the process. Luckily, he gets away and goes into a subway. We then see a restaurant selling burgers who come to life and gruesomely eat everyone in the restaurant. I'm gonna blur this footage since it's like really, really gory and I'm sure that most of you don't want to be seeing that, but it's really intense. Hands get chopped off, fingernails ripped out, etc. The burgers then expand larger and larger to the point where one of them destroys the subway that the fat guy's on. He gets eaten by the burger and finds the baby from the start and saves him. He finds a way to kill the burger and successfully does. All seems good until an army of burgers rush him and the video ends. I'm sure this video was just trying to send the message that fast food is bad and can kill you. Um, so it showed the food just completely tearing people to shreds in a, in a really detailed, gruesome way. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know why and how this scare kids. Scary Gummy Bear. Alright, so this is the first bit of lost media on this iceberg. Scary Gummy Bear was a screamer video on YouTube that showed the original the original is completely lost, on YouTube at least. We know that the thumbnail was orange text on a black background and was clearly made in Movie Maker. If you remember this video, if you have any information on it, do not hesitate to comment about it. Or I guess alternatively, uh, in a more secure way of me actually seeing the video, you could put it on my Discord server. And the, uh, the link is in the description. So the scary gummy bear video is one of mystery and I really hope we end up finding it somehow. I can't really get the Wayback Machine to work too well with YouTube, but that might be a way to find the video. Or at least the thumbnail. The video is most likely uploaded around 2011 and it was viewable in 2012. I hope this info helps, and so the search begins! D-Fantasy. This is the one you've all been waiting for. D-Y-E Fantasy, or, or Die Fantasy, or, or D-Fantasy because it's a, it's a French person who made it, is an animated music video for a song by the name of Fantasy by, well, D. The beautifully animated music video for this actually pretty cool song is one of the most unique ones I've ever seen. So, the music video for Fantasy starts off with a group of teenagers sneaking into a closed swimming pool. The teenage dream. Right off the bat, there is some slightly explicit content. Where you see a girl's butt, underskirt, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, this is this is relevant, trust me, I'm not just mentioning it. Um, there are four teens, two of which are presumably boyfriend and girlfriend, alongside two others who seem to be a blind date of sorts. The girl, who is our main character, is the more shy and innocent one compared to her friends. The couple are making out and take it a little further while the other guy tries to kiss the girl. And she quickly refuses. Ouch. Poor guy. Anyway, to evade this poor sap, she jumps right into the pool and just kind of floats there until something starts poking around in her swimsuit. Obviously, she's terrified of this and leaves the pool. The guy tries to help her to see what's going on. They then see the couple who have turned into this gross, zombie-like version of themselves. The shy girl runs away, but the guy wasn't so lucky. He just sits there in shock as he gets, well, killed by this disgusting abomination resembling his friends. The creatures have mutated into these really disturbing and scary designs and they try to attack the girl until she jumps into the pool and swims all the way down to the bottom. She sees a reflection of herself and swims through it. It leads her to this weird, Stranger Things upside down looking world, and the sun shines in her eyes, and her eyes explode, as she gazes upon this giant beast. So, you might be wondering, what the hell did I just watch? Well, turns out this video has a greater meaning behind it all. Well, obviously there is, but what is it? Well, the common consensus is that this is a video about the loss of innocence and fear of sexual imagery. It's essentially a gruesome coming of age story. Teenagers do a lot of crazy shit. Not every teenager is used to it or comfortable with it, or is even experienced with it in any way, so it can be kind of a scary thing. The monster in the girl's pants could be a representation of puberty and being freaked out when your body's changing. The girl's eyes exploding is probably symbolic of how, no matter how hard we try, growing up and losing your childlike innocence is inevitable. I'm pretty sure this meaning was lost on a lot of the kids who clicked on this video and didn't understand what was happening until the zombie mutant showed up and everything. Um, I think I can safely say that to some, watching this video was a traumatic experience. And maybe even gave the kids watching the loss of innocence that the video was trying to portray. I remember clicking on this video, but only watching until the more inappropriate parts and then clicking off, since I knew that this wasn't really, uh, you know, for me. Although, lots of other kids unfortunately didn't do the same thing. To all the people who suggested this, I hope this helped you get over your fear of this video. Also, quick side note, if you buy the song on iTunes, which I did, You'll see that the album art is straight up weird cool, but like, this is from way before weird core became a thing. It's pretty cool stuff. Elisa Lamb. 
Alright, this is a pretty dark one. The Mysterious Case of Elisa Lam is a story about a Canadian woman who checked into the Stay On Main slash Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. On January 26, 2013, there was some incredibly strange footage of Elisa in an elevator, which is the last time she had been seen alive. In this footage, she acts extremely strangely and seemingly hides from something. Her movements are weird and confusing, and at some point it looks like she's talking to someone. However, the elevator door remains open the entire time through all of this until she leaves. Elisa was bipolar, so this could potentially explain the behavior, but allegedly she was on medication during this. She was later found in the hotel's water tank with her clothes off. This in itself is an anomaly. To get into there, she would have to 1. Get to the top of the tank platform, climb all the way up a 10 foot ladder, open the 20 pound lid, get into the tank and then somehow close the lid when she was inside the tank and then take her clothes off. So what happened? Well, allegedly there wasn't any foul play involved, but some think that there was a supernatural element involved. See, the hotel once hosted Jack Unterweger in 1991, a serial killer. There was also an unsolved murder in 1964, so was there a ghost involved? People staying in the hotel complained that the water tasted disgusting and was dark in color. Apparently her body had been in the water tank for weeks, which is disgusting because people were drinking corpse water without even knowing it. The story is very unfortunate and we still don't have a conclusion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think it's pretty obvious as to why people suggested this. Since even learning about it as a teenager is disturbing, and obviously for kids this grim and very true story was a very disturbing thing to learn about. Bootleg DVDs. So, this entry is referring to a very specific thing requested by a viewer. I can't find the original comment, so this is mostly from memory, but I think I have the gist of it down. In both the United States and Mexico, there were a lot of bootleg DVDs back in the 2000s. These bootleg DVDs were often of very low quality, and when it came to new movies, they would usually be crappy camcorder recordings from a movie theater, which had a bit of a creepy aura to them, but that's not what this entry is talking about. Sometimes, the vendors would give you a DVD with the case of the movie being what you bought, but instead, you would actually put in your DVD player and you'd get something completely different. Sometimes it would be horror movies or strange Mexican shows or something along those lines. Imagine being a kid in 2008. Your dad brings back a DVD of Wally, -E, which you've been wanting to see. You pop the DVD into your DVD player and you see a very disturbing horror movie. Maybe it's a zombie related thing or even a classic like Friday the 13th. The quality is bad and grainy, the sounds are tinny, and the Spanish subtitles flash on screen faster than you can read. That's a pretty scary situation, right? Well, that actually happened to a lot of kids, and it left a mark on them. This is the next step in analog horror, which if you don't know, is a genre that utilizes old technology for its horror, like VHS tapes and that kind of thing. In my opinion, and many others, the future of analog horror will be from old YouTube videos and DVDs. We see some examples of this already, but I think it's going to take off in the future. Like, 240p horror is going to be what it's going to be, essentially. I think these bootleg DVDs are a great example as to why. Cartoon Rule 34 Alright, let's uh, make this one quick. This entry is referring to Rule 34 art of innocent cartoon characters. Rule 34 being the 34th rule of the internet. Quote, if it exists, there's no one of it, unquote. There, unfortunately, is a lot of art of this genre of cartoon characters that could be easily accessed by kids just by a simple Google Images search. Nasty stuff. Ash beats up Pikachu for stealing his hat. This is an animated parody of Pokemon where Ash and Pikachu are playing until Pikachu steals his hat and Ash proceeds to curse him out and run after him. The curses are bleeped, but still. After eventually catching Pikachu, Ash proceeds to beat him up. We see this from Pikachu's perspective while his blood sprays on the screen. We then see what happens days later with Ash at a Pokemon competition. He tries to get Pikachu out of the ball and what comes out is just a yellow goop. This animation is just unnecessarily violent and mean-spirited and I'm glad I never watched it back in the day. It's uh, it's messed up. Peanut Butter Recall In 2007 there was a contamination of Peter Pan and Great Value Peanut Butter with Salmonella, killing some people who ate it and putting others in the hospital. Jim Adler a workplace injury related law firm put out a commercial telling people to contact them if they had a jar of this peanut butter. Here's the video.
If you are one of the many who suffered from food poisoning because of contaminated peanut butter, you may be entitled to a cash award. If you were hospitalized or if someone you know died from contaminated peanut butter, call attorney Jim Adler right now. If this has happened to you, keep the jar. If you've been hospitalized, you may be entitled to a cash award. Some Peter Pan and Great Value peanut butter has been recalled. Keep the jar and call attorney Jim Adler now at 713-777-4000. I'm not sure exactly why, but this video has just such an unsettling aura to it. The creepy music in the background, the voices, the idea that people were killed by eating such a common food as peanut butter, all of it, it just kind of reminds me of that Omega Mart uh, lemon commercial. This peanut butter ad recall really reminds me of something that I would see while watching Nickelodeon late at night at my grandma's house with all the lights off. To this day, it's still very unnerving. Booth World. Booth World Industries is a pretty interesting and interactive creepypasta. The story is about a man who gets a call from a random number saying Welcome to Booth World Industries, my name is Samantha and I will be your operator today. Name? The author gives a fake name to the woman on the phone and she explains that the fake name cannot be used. He then decides to give her the name of his ex-girlfriend. Remodeling is scheduled for August 21st, 2015. At 3 o'clock that day, he got a call from a number and heard his ex-girlfriend being murdered on the line. The author is surprised by this, but is happy about it because of the resentment he had against her. Yeah, he's, uh, pretty messed up. The guy even schedules another remodeling. While trying to schedule this, he is told that he is gonna get remodeled that Wednesday. The only way he can stop the remodeling is to recruit over 1,000 people to Booth World Industries. The author of the story then invites everyone reading to join Booth World. All that you have to do is call the number. Obviously, it's, uh, it's fake, but it's pretty unnerving. I'm sure a lot of kids called this number just out of sheer curiosity, and something that's cool is that sometimes the creator of the story would actually call the people who called Booth World again, and uh, they would chat about it. Which is, uh, it's pretty cool. Still a pretty graphic story, which is why kids were scared by it. Alien on Roof. Alright, this one really feels like it would be in a top 15 video, so I'm gonna narrate it like that. Number 129, Alien on Roof. This entry is referring to a video of a large alien on a man's roof. The alien is big and scary and looks very real. The alien looks real, like it's real life and it scared me beyond belief. The sound the alien makes kinda sounds like a cute little mouse, but the alien is nothing but. People say that it is CGI, but I really think it's real. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Tromaville Movies this one is pretty self-explanatory. Tromaville movies are super violent and gruesome. Even their most popular movie, The Toxic Avenger, features extremely violent and disturbing scenes, some even being towards children. The contents of these films are genuinely traumatizing if watched by a child. ELH. ELH is an unused beta boss from the original Luigi's Mansion. Not much is known about it since clearly it was scrapped pretty early on. All that remains of ELH are a few animations and some elemental abilities. There's something so creepy about this idle animation. It just stands there, swinging back and forth slowly. As a kid, I was fascinated with the mystery of the beta of Luigi's Mansion, and this was always one of the things that freaked me out the most about it. It's genuinely so unnerving, and the fact that it was unfinished adds so much to it. I feel like if this was fully animated and textured, it wouldn't be as creepy, but in the state it's in, it really is creepy. Evil Stick The Evil Stick is a toy that appeared in certain dollar stores that was far more sinister than it seemed. The package of the toy was innocent enough, featuring a stolen anime character and promising wonderful music. What you get is this. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? If you remove the foil, you can clearly see a photoshopped picture of a girl slitting a wrist. Yeah. This toy was bought by a mother for her two-year-old. Obviously, she didn't see the picture before she bought the toy since you have to pull a battery tab to actually activate the lights and sounds, which most people wouldn't do in the store. She went to the news about it, and that popularized the strange toy. Turns out this image is a gore art piece portraying a vampire preparing to drink her own blood. The creator of this image never gave permission for his art to be on this toy, and he never intended for children to ever see it. The image on the toy is edited further, which is bizarre. Something that's also very weird about it is that it's not the only picture on the toy. There were a bunch of other pictures on the toys, some of which were completely innocent, and some of which were disturbing. There were pictures of anime characters and zombies, angels and monsters. 
I've got to ask the one big question about this all. What were they thinking? Well, turns out the toy was mass manufactured by a random factory in China. Obviously. The toy is extremely rare, so if you've got one, then you're really, really lucky. In total, this toy and the buzz around it was totally scary to kids at the time, and I'm glad you guys suggested it. T is for Toilet. T is for Toilet is a stop motion animation video by Lee Hardcastle, who was featured earlier. The video features a kid using the toilet without a kitty seat for the first time, and wait, that's the little shit from Hamster Hell! Anyway, he's scared to use the toilet, but his parents encourage him, since there isn't anything to worry about, to them at least. The toilet then shoots out a bunch of green shit, and short after this, a bunch of other stuff in the bathroom starts to leak it. The toilet then grows eyes and heavily resembles that Ghostbusters toy from the 1980s. The toilet very gruesomely kills and eats the parents, while the little shit from Hamster Hell just watches. Turns out, it was all just a dream. The kid gets up to use the toilet, but gets stuck in it. The dad runs in, sees his son stuck, and starts laughing. The sink then falls off the wall, and uh, the kid passes away, to say the least. Uh, need I say anything else? The Wyoming Incident. The Wyoming Incident is an urban legend from 2006 about a television station in Wyoming being hacked as a mysterious video plays with some creepy faces and distorted audio. The hijacking lasted for over six minutes before the broadcast resumed back to normal. That same night, hundreds of people went to local hospitals with symptoms of headaches, hallucinations, reasonless fear, etc. This was either caused by the infrasound contained in the video, the imagery, or both. The Wyoming incident is actually an ARG, and it's one of, if not the oldest ARG in internet history. It goes pretty deep, but I don't have the time to explain the whole thing. Dancing Frog Legs This entry is referring to a video by the name of Frog Legs Dancing with a Little Salt. The video shows exactly that, some fresh cut frog legs sitting on a plate. When a little salt is added, boom, they start moving. The video is incredibly weird, and the way that the legs move is pretty unnerving and unnatural, and lands itself in the uncanny valley. Now, what the hell is happening? Are these zombies? Should you be scared? Well, no, they aren't zombies. And since they are freshly cut, the cells in the legs are still alive, meaning that when salt is spread on it, it increases the electrical conductivity, releasing some electrical potential, which is how nerves and cells send signals to each other. The signals are being sent, causing the muscles to twitch. Even with this explanation, it's still a very unnerving video that doesn't really leave your mind. There are a bunch of other videos of food that is, uh, well, let's just say freshly killed, still moving, and they're honestly really disturbing. Shed 17 Shed 17 is a disturbing horror parody of Thomas the Tank Engine. It's essentially an explanation as to how Thomas came to be. It's framed as if it's a documentary in this universe. In it, you learn about a boy named Thomas who was killed by a train. In an attempt to bring the boy back to life, two characters try and combine the DNA of Thomas with a train. They try and do this multiple times and fail each one, until the perfect one is made. Later, there are people trying to imitate this sensation, but all the imitations led to the death of the host. Eventually, Thomas visits Shed 17, the place where he was created, only to find a bunch of failed attempts to create him, essentially. He realizes that he's just a clone, and he loses it, causing his skeleton to pop out, leading him to die. The imagery in this video is genuinely disturbing, and I feel really sorry for the kids who watch this video, especially considering the fact that many of them watched the show when they were young, or in some situations were still fans of it. So. The Zone Archive is a page on Newgrounds which features Rule 34 parodies of popular kids' shows, most notably My Life as a Teenage Robot. In the case of this animation, it's uh, it's just really messed up. I mean, the character gets spear and she's a teenager, programmed to be a teenager at least. In reality, she's like four years old, which makes it even more messed up. Zone Sama is the person behind it all. He has ties to people like Shadman, which is beyond messed up. Some of you younger ones out there probably recognize this character, Zone Tan. She appears in the background of a level in Friday Night Funkin'. The reason that this is on the iceberg is because, unfortunately, kids found these Rule 34 cartoons and were traumatized by the, well, girl. Angrier the Birds. Angrier the Birds is a claymation animation about a self-insert character guy being upset that Angry Birds is popular and his claymation variety show isn't. He decides to buy a gun because he's upset, and gets one for free from uh, Mr. King Hippo. He then decides to go back to where the Angry Birds are and mercilessly blast them all to bloody bits. The animation on this is incredibly good, like movie quality, and so is the gore. It's just sad to watch these birds and pigs get brutally torn apart for no reason. The carnage lasts for nearly three minutes and just gets more and more gruesome. Eventually, Mr. T joins the guy while carrying a bazooka, and then Miley Cyrus and the Annoying Orange show up, and then you can guess what happens to them. 
At the end, Mr. T shoots the camera, and we see Tex saying, pretty hardcore, right? Gun violence is for fiction, and not for reality. And then the video ends. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty sadistic. I know if I saw this as a kid, I'd be beyond disturbed and upset. Sitting at only around 30,000 views, so I'd be surprised if any of you guys remember this. Kill the Powerpuff Girls. This is an incredibly messed up and brutal Newgrounds game where you, well, kill the Powerpuff Girls for no apparent reason. It's upsetting and violent and awful, and I really don't want to bring much attention to it. I'm not going to show any of the footage since it's beyond messed up, and I feel terrible for any kids who had the misfortune of watching this video or playing the game. Bananas exploding on face. This century is referring to an incredibly strange video of a man with a mask on. Attached to said mask, there are a bunch of bananas that have explosives inside them. The guy lights the fuses for the explosives, and, well, the bananas explode. The descriptions of this video says, quote, A Brooklyn-based artist, William Lanson, put on a mask embedded with firecracker-stuffed bananas and filmed himself lighting each fuse, causing the bananas to explode. What's the meaning? Slant Art says, The banana is a classic agent for slapstick pratfall and has also come to represent pitfalls of corporate farming practices. I say bananas are evil and must be destroyed. What, what is it with Brooklyn art people? They're always so weird. And you see them like every six blocks or so. It's, uh, it's a lot. Brooklyn's a weird place. Uh, the video is strange and unnerving, and that's exactly why it's here. r slash 5050. r slash 5050 is a subreddit dedicated to showing you either something horrid and disgusting or something cute and pleasant. What you see depends on your luck, since your chance is 50-50. You could see a cute puppy on one side, or you could see something disgusting, like, I don't know, someone stepping on a nail. Like Run the Gauntlet, which was in the original Iceberg series, I'm gonna heavily encourage you not to use this subreddit. There's some really, really disgusting and scarring, traumatizing imagery on this subreddit, and it's, uh, it's messed up. You don't want to see it. The subreddit has been visited by many popular YouTubers and streamers, leading to their young audiences wanting to try it for themselves, which obviously led to awful trauma from the terrible imagery on the subreddit. those tears. I know that was such a beautiful finale, but I just want you to, to see me and uh, listen to me for a second here. So, this is it. The end of the childhood trauma iceberg. It's been one hell of a run. I know that this series has basically been my life for the past few months, and this this one video alone was basically my entire summer. Um, so I hope that it was satisfactory to you guys. 
It's super stereotypical of YouTubers to thank their audience and give a whole sappy speech about everything, but now I kind of get it, honestly, because there's something really special about having a community and having an audience that, that enjoys your stuff and enjoys your content, and I, I feel like it's hard not to be thankful. Like you just saw, there's a bunch of awesome fat art that's just like, it's so cool, like, come on, that's awesome. It's been a long ride. For those who have been there for every single video and every single premiere, I know who you are. If you stuck around for the original two messed up premieres, you're a veteran, you're OG, and I appreciate it a lot. I also want to thank Law Jackson, who created the Captain Orion rig that you saw for the animations. He does uh, rigging for Adobe Animate and Adobe Flash, you know, same thing. And uh, his YouTube channel is called Rig Theory, and it's really good. I, I, I contacted him, I hired him to make that Captain Orion rig, and I animated it, and it's awesome. So satisfactory. Thank you, Law. Go check him out. Honestly, I'm a tiny little bit sad about the end of this all. I mean, it's been so long. This series has been so incredibly special to me, and, and many others, I'm hoping. And now it comes to an end. But what's next, right? What, what am I going to do after this? I feel like that's something that's on some of your minds. Well, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, I'm going to keep making YouTube videos, I'm going to keep making horror, especially Iceberg stuff, because that's clearly what you guys want to see. None of that uh, boxing video sketch, we can just forget that for now. It was a good video, but just didn't really fit with the channel. I think that you guys should stick around, and of course I'm going to say that, but I, there's generally some good stuff coming. I got a collaboration with a YouTuber by the name Shooky coming up on Liminal Spaces, which is going to be really good. I love his videos, hopefully you guys do too. Our video is going to be awesome. I don't want to bore you, but this is it. We're done. Honestly, it's it's kind of relieving now that uh, this series has ended. I can move on to doing other things, and hopefully you guys will come with me. And I hold on, I gotta answer that real quick. Okay, it's a message from the original creator of the uh, iceberg, the, the the first one. Oh my god, he's making a sequel, and it's I don't even know how many times bigger. Look at all those entries, and it's just it's not even close to being finished yet.